Hello history fans, today we are going on a trek to find Dunstan Burr Castle. So this is Caister Harbour, very very uh, misty today. Normally you can see the castle from here but uh, not today. Not sure what's up with the seagulls this morning. The promontory on which the castle was built was already named Dunstan Burr before construction began. The name means the fort of the town by the rock. This seems to suggest that occupation of the site began much earlier. Indeed, during works in the 1920s and 1930s, prehistoric and Roman pottery, Iron Age millstones, a Roman brooch and hearths of the 1st century BC and 2nd century AD were found on the site. So it's quite a picturesque walk to get to the castle, it's about a mile or so. Um, on this side there's uh, lots of cows and sheep, and on that side is the very rocky coastline and beach. Don't know if you can make it out through the, the mist, but uh, you can just see the castle emerging in the distance. How stunning a view is that? Recent archaeology by English Heritage in 2003 also confirmed previous occupation. It revealed a ridge and furrow field system which predated the stone wall, cut into an earlier earth bank, which has been interpreted as the remains of the rampart of an Iron Age promontory fort. After entering through the Great Gatehouse, we find ourselves in the Inner Ward. Dunstan Burr Castle was built between 1313 and 1322 by Earl Thomas of Lancaster. He was the wealthiest nobleman in England. It was built at a time when the Earl's relations with his cousin, King Edward II, had become hostile. Thomas had been a ringleader in the capture and killing of Edward's royal favourite, Piers Gaveston, in 1312. We're now heading east from the gatehouse. This is the best preserved length of Curtain Wall. The towers along it probably date to the 1320s and are all rectangular in plan. Built against the rear side of the constable's tower are the ruins of a large house, probably for the constable. This is Egginclure Tower which comprised a narrow gateway on the ground floor, with lodgings above it. There was originally a drawbridge over the moat, which is cut deep into the bedrock at this point. Thomas of Lancaster made little use of his new castle. The only time he might have visited it was in 1319, when he was on his way north to join Edward's military campaign against Scotland. Civil war then broke out in 1321 between Edward and his enemies among the barons. After the initial royalist successes, Thomas fled the south of England for Dunstanburg in 1322, but was intercepted en route. Thomas was captured and executed. The tower on the west wall is called Lilburn Tower. It is named after John de Lilburn, who became constable in 1322. He probably oversaw its construction. This was probably the residence of an important official, it was provided with fine windows and window seats. By 1326, the castle was given back to Thomas's brother, Henry of Lancaster. John of Gaunt acquired the castle in 1362. In 1380, he added this gatehouse, complete with a barbican and drawbridge. It became the main entrance to the castle. We've now returned to the original gatehouse. The first change Gaunt made to the castle was a wall 6.5 metres high and 1.3 metres thick, creating a courtyard on the north side of the great gatehouse, which contained his own apartments. The carriageway under the gatehouse was blocked, turning the gatehouse into a well-defended keep. The ground floor of the gatehouse contained two large guard rooms, on the first floor were further rooms for the garrison and a room over the gate passage. 
The most important apartments in the castle were on the uppermost floor, along with a hall and great chamber. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Dunstanburg Castle. Please leave any comments you have below, and if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you'd like to be notified of our next video, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thanks so much, and bye for now.